Okay, you can see that I am in eCompanion and I also have opened up Immersive. So I'm going to go to Applications, SL20, and I believe I want this control right here. That would be the newer looking Haas control and those are the controls that we have on our SL20 and HL machines. So I'm going to open this, allow it, with any luck, this will come up and work. All right, here it is. So let's learn a bit, a little bit about the CNC lathe. I'm going to zoom up on this machine with the roller ball, rotate around using the left mouse button. If I want to pan, I use both mouse buttons and pan. So you can see, here's the lathe. Here is the turret. The turret is what holds all the tools. If I were to count these, I believe there's 10 spots on the turret. And you can see that these tool lengths are varying from place to place. You have to be careful where you put certain tools in the turret. You can see right now, this would be a pretty safe place to, to change a tool. But if I'm out here, I have these long tools. So if I'm out turning with this tool, and I have this one next to it. If I want to change a tool close to the part, I may just ram this right into the chuck. So I'm probably going to be a little more safe with that. Chuck, chuck holding devices can be a lot of different things. Usually it is hydraulically driven on a CNC lathe. Not always. You can have three jaw and four jaw scroll chucks, but ours are set up with hydraulic devices, clamping devices. On the lathe, X controls diameters and Z controls length, so those are the two primary axes we are concerned with. Remember that because it is important. Alright, so to start up the lathe, it's really no different than the mill. Power on, reset the alarm, power up, restart. Now, you don't really see anything happening here at this time because it's already in the home position, meaning it's back in the X all the way and back in the Z all the way. Here's one more axis. It's uh, tailstock, but normally uh, I don't think you're going to be messed with the tailstock on programming, unfortunately, and immersive. However, our SL machine does have a tailstock and we may use it to support parts. The two codes you're probably concerned with there then are M21 and M22, which are extend and retract tailstock, but that will come later. So again, a modal code. A modal code is like turning a switch on. Once it's instated, it's going to stay instated. So for instance, G20, G21. That would be modal code. Or we're going to want to stay in inch mode or we want to be in metric mode. Well, most of the time in here, we're going to be in inch mode. So we'll leave that alone. We're looking at a, uh, a program up here. I have reset and power up started the machine, so if I go to memory, I hit cycle start, we can watch this thing machine quick. And you'll see the graphics just like with the mill simulator aren't aren't the best in the world, but they do get the job done. We wanna make it go a little faster. Let's uh let's speed up the feed rate. I don't know if it has any real effect on the simulator. It appears to. So it's doing some OD turning, outside diameter turning. And now you can see the material come off. So <clears throat> the uh, there are some G codes then in associated with the lay that are pretty much the same as the mill. G0 is a rapid. G1 is a feed rate move, straight line. So if you want to move in a straight line, then it's going to be G1, but you need to have a feed rate. And here's the differences between a lathe and a mill. The feed rate is going to be programmed in feed per revolution on a lathe. And uh, this has obviously has something to do with the material that you're cutting and whatever material you're using as a cutter. Most of the time we'll be using carbide to be doing the cutting and the stock will vary aluminum brass plastic so we're gonna cover speeds and feeds more later 
Importantly though, I want you to know right now that the feed rate is going to be in inches per revolution. Well, either that or millimeters per revolution, depending on what it is you're programming. So I'm just going to stop this. Well, I guess the program's finished. Nope, it's changing tools. You see how I went back to change, change the tool. So I'm just going to go feed hold, reset. Now I can handle jog it out of the way. I go to handle jog, X, positive. Hold that down. Not really moving. Handle jog. There we go. A little faster. In that way. Move the Z out. So when we consider part coordinates on the lathe, it's done by center line and front face of the part. We're going to program everything X positive, Z negative. Maybe with a few exceptions, but most of the time it's going to be an X diameter coordinate and a Z negative coordinate. So there's two basic ways you can program feed rate. Yes, it's in inches per rev or millimeters per rev, but there's also constant surface speed and just straight up inches per rev mode. And mm, d OD turning is typically done with a constant surface speed, meaning it's since the diameter may be getting smaller or bigger, it's going to increase that spindle speed to keep up the constant surface speed. Now, constant surface speed does not work with center line because it would see a zero diameter when you bring a, for instance, a drill tool to center line it would just max that RPM out. There's another control here that we'll use. It's a G50 command. A G50 along with an S command sets a max spindle speed. I'll, you know, I'm covering this now, but it'll be covered more in depth later. So if you want to change tools, you're best off to go home. So if I go to MDI here, I type in G0 G53 X 0 point and then another line of code we'll make sure it's on the end of block here remember this is a non-modal code then the G53 is a one shot code we'll go G0 G53 Z 0 reset Cycle start, and away it goes. You can see that it went back to home position. So you should know the difference between modal and non-modal now. So another thing is spindle rotation. Now spindle rotation is based on the tool alignment. And you can see that in here the tools are kind of flipped upside down. So it may seem a little weird, but an M3 is actually spinning this way. It may look like it's counterclockwise, but it's spinning in accordance to how the tool is located. So let's quick here, we'll delete, follow along, do this yourselves. Type in M3. S 500 right enter reset cycle start you can see that that arrow came up briefly to show you which way it's spinning so this way is M3 that way would be M4 just like with lathes uh, sorry mills uh, feed rate is decimal point sensitive except for the fact most of the time your feed rates are going to be between uh, three thousandths and ten thousandths per revolution. So if you have three point or ten point, the machine's probably going to alarm on you and say that that it can't possibly go that fast because it can't. But there are times when you will use feed per minute mode instead of inches per rev, and that's when the spindle's not turning. So for instance, if you want to bar feed something, 
you really don't, or bar pull something, you really don't want the spindle turning as you're doing it. So in order to get the X or Z to move, then you have to program it in feed per minute mode. Counterclockwise, clockwise arcs. So you've got G2 clockwise would be going in this direction counterclockwise would be going from right to left direction mm, what else do we have here we already talked about G0 and G1 being the same and that uh, the tool will change wherever you tell the tool to change so let's do this for instance just to show you guys We'll go to handle jog here, and we'll just Z right on over. Ah, one one other thing that's different, and a little more handy in my opinion, is that uh, we change up the way we instate tool length compensation and change tools. It happens at the same time, which is nice. So if I want to change the tool six offset six. Here we are. I'm changing to tool 6 and here's offset 6. So whatever is in the column for 6, we can see here, here's tool 6. There's the setting for the Z and the X. We'll talk about the other stuff later. So I'll go back to MDI. And I'm just going to hit cycle start. What happens? It changes wherever it's at. Well, I got lucky there because I was out of the way in the X. But if I were to handle jog down and become closer to the part, you can see that the machine on immersive will let you smash into the turret. Please don't do this on the lathe because lathes are expensive to fix. I'll go back to MDI, cycle start it, and you'll see tool 6 is already there. So we can also just go to MDI, turret forward or turret reverse, smash, 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 you get the idea. Go home before changing tools. And also the procedure will go with this, I want to be at the machines with you checking your setup. So if I have not verified your setup to run, you are not allowed to set up and or to operate it to push cycle start. If you do that and something happens, the machine breaks, and I did not verify your setup, you fail the class. That is just a simple rule that you're going to have to be willing to adhere to and listen. Once we've done this a few times, I may say, "Okay, I trust you. Go do your setup, and machine it." But because it's so expensive to fix the lathe, I need to verify your setups. This concludes the lesson about the introduction to the CNC lathe. You should know that the zero is typically at the face of the part. Axes that we're concerned about most are X diameters, Z lengths. We do have a B axis that gets used every now and then on the SL machine. Feed rate is in this is per revolution typically but sometimes it is in feed per minute if you're going to do bar pulling or bar feeding and the turret needs to be moved home when you're going to change a tool always go X first Z second clear in the X home in the Z change tools